My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slay the Spire, the High Ascension grind with the Ironclad. We've got our Nyas bonus back, so let's go. Has to be removed. You, none of these other options are reliable enough. Yeah, let's get a strike out of there. Alright, what's our path? Uh, again, we have no ability not to hit an elite. Elite, 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 elite. So you can see there's no path that bypasses those. This one has an early shop and then a bunch of rest spaces after the elite. I think I have to take that. Okay. I would have double defended as a priority, but not when I'm frail. Double defense and I still aren't. Still aren't. Double defense and I'm still not defended. My mouse accuracy is garbage. I can take a spot weakness this early, have that be part of my core deck. Huh. This one's gonna be remove another card so that we can cycle through our deck more quickly to get the spot weakness again and again and again and again. Can we not get it on literally the only turn the cultist doesn't attack, please? Like, I, I understand. It's good for the memes and all, but like, really? Gosh. Let me guess. Debuff and buff? No, one of them is attacking. Awesome. Couldn't kill either of them at that rate. So instead, I will just set up the easiest next thing. Body Slam was originally going to go in this deck, but it doesn't at this rate. Upgrade spot weakness. Beautiful. Get away with that free. We will have to use spot weakness every time it comes up here, though. Which is a disappointment, but... Oh, we got debuffed on the first turn as well. Rough. Really? Yeah, we're gonna die. Cool. Cool. Fun and interactive game. Um... Alright, so it's probably time to speedrun the way up to the... Mount again. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna allow myself to use the hot case here. And we're probably just gonna allow ourselves to take as much damage as possible and just go from room to room. Chop. <laughs> Rock off to the rampage. I'm mad because this is better than any deck that I've got recently already in High Ascension. Mm -hmm. Killing a single turn with most draws. Ah, that's actually just short. Oh no, of course, the Paper Frog means it isn't short. Beautiful. Let's upgrade the Rampage and then the Bash. The Bash especially because the vulnerability is actually more powerful now than it previously was. Ah. Well. Let's get to our Rampage as quickly as possible so that we can actually still use it as a potent offensive ability. Mm -hmm. Kinda gotta lump these ones. Next draw has a technical possibility of drawing Rampage as its final card, which would be so good. So you know that Rampage is now dealing 24 damage. So it has the ability to kill that sentry. Or it lost two strikes as not to kill the other one. Double defense. Cool. All right, we got two turns to draw the Rampage now. All right, just don't be in my bottom five cards. Ooh, it's in the bottom five cards. Thankfully, we get triple strike. I wasn't really planning on that. Choose your bracelets here. Just nothing. Right, remove a card. It's always remove a card when you have the rampage. 
Unless you believe actively that immediately you are going to die. I'm also now going to rest here. Perfect. The rampage on turn one. Rampage bash on turn two for the wake up. Jeff, just totally defend here. It's totally fine. Because we're one more rampage from killing. Easy does it. Popped him. Heart of War as well as just nothing. We're going to go with another card removal in the next space as well. Probably should have targeted the backliner, the one that actually was making itself stronger that turn. Yeah, it would have resulted in me say, taking slightly less damage. Uh, here... Just gain. Removal. Literally two spaces from the boss now, so... Pressure's kind of off. Oh, dearie me, am I going to be able to win this combat? Who knows? See how much easier everything is when you're not in High Ascension? God, oh, this would have been a fun deck as well. But instead, it's time to continue bashing my head against the wall, hoping that the blood that spouts from my fontanelle... Uh, happens to erode the mortar in between the bricks and eventually we make our way through. God, awful options. I'm a... See, the thing is, if I take the starting relic option and I get, you know, a particularly bad starting relic, I'm thinking summit along the lines of Calling Bell, uh, Eternal Flower, Eternal Flower, Eternal Feather, rather, uh, Tiny House... Velvet Choker, Philosopher's Stone, you know, just basically like any result, actually, uh, and we'll regret it, and we'll lose. Transform a card, great, random option, random potions, and get a random curse. All of these are completely garbage. There's one path that has no elites, and it has a relatively early shop. I'm going to take the 250. We got Regret. That's a really bad curse. It's a curse that has uh, an element of HP removal that you can't counter. Or rather, like, you can't naturally prevent. You can't just block it, I guess is what I mean to say. I should have played two defense there. I would have saved myself one HP. I'm relying on going to this shop early enough to... Remove the regret before it causes me to remove my life from myself. I have to strike again, otherwise I don't have the ability to kill next turn with Bash Strike. Shrug it off, I guess. Remove the regret easily. All right, attempt number two. I'm going to try and win this run with the unceasing top. Unfortunately, yeah, thankfully, nothing in here is actually particularly good for me. Do I take the body slam to kind of keep me alive while I continue? I think I do. Because it upgrades to be zero cost, so it's not going to stand in the way. So it's kind of like a, a interim kind of thing. It's just here until we get you know, enough removal. Defense? Mm. Could have been slightly better. Oh well. Popped him. Nope. 
Shovel, you can add deep loot rest sites. Okay, I'm probably going to do that at three rest sites upcoming. All right, I'm going to generate a weapon here because this is going to be a rough fight without it. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hopefully I get defensive cards this turn. Nope, managed to get most of my aggressive cards though. Can plus defend, try and keep us alive, and goodbye. Rage definitely goes in this deck. This isn't going to function as a zero cost deck. <clears throat> Not yet. Not for a while. I, I have to upgrade all of my defensive options, and I'm going to have to keep them as well. I'm going to the left despite the fact that I don't want to be here. God, another rage though. Uh, because I need to go to another rest site. As much as I want to dig, I can't afford to. I will lose the final combat. That's effectively what we need our deck to be doing, right? Just what we did last time. Again and again and again. Damn it, I had an upgraded strike in that hand. I actually had lethal that turn. Alright. This is gonna be really bad. Great opening turn, though. Managed to get the enemy to transform in time. Still haven't taken any damage. Actually increased our block by one every single time we attack there, save for the final one. Um, double defense, single strike. Two turns time, we're going down, so... Hopefully. Oh, this is a pretty good hand. So, Bash upgraded strike is going to be 1321. 1321 is 34. Uh, it's enough to split the enemy. Good. And we'll throw in another attack of good measure. The main quandary is whether or not we can split the enemy before they do their 32 damage attacks. That kind of thing. Rest of the deck is mostly defensive. We're dead. Ugh. Very slightly still alive. Hanging on by a thread. All right. Just a bunch of defense cards and body slam then. Mm-hmm. Oh, the rage is unupgraded. I'm losing one HP every single time I do that. Yep. Well, time for a new run. Yeah. And we get the Nyaz bonus again. Yep. Seven for 250 is pretty good. Plus, we get a really early shot to utilize it. Nice. We have a lot of rests on this pathway as well. So why don't you give me Gilia? Why don't you do that? That'd be cool. I'd appreciate that. Mm. Yeah. 
there's the shovel. I actually, I, I could. I only need to upgrade one body slam and then the rest I could dig. Oh, there's a body slam. There's a ghost. Body slam, ghostly armor, true grit, card removal. It's, it's, there's, there's no way. There is no way that there is a better combination of things there. Now, I definitely need to somehow get a lot more upgrades in my deck than I currently have, but it'll pay off. Hopefully. We've done one more damage with the strike there instead. Thankfully, it doesn't matter. Couldn't have been both of the defense. Uh, couldn't have been both of the defense. What? Was. Uh. Dex is actually better than regen for us. Couldn't have been both of the body slams, though. Body slam number one. Now, if you look two spaces across, you'll see body slam number two. Already ready for us. Go get him, body slam. Cool. Even cooler. All right. No, nope, way too late for those. Body slam. Next is true grit. Sharon's ashes. Karen's ashes, brother. When you exhaust a card, deal three damage to all enemies. Not bad. Not bad. Not gonna be supreme re uh, supremely rather relevant a lot of the time, but it's not bad. Boss on the first floor. Okay, cool. It's a boss against whom we want to defend as well. That's. A lot of things are going in our favor in this one so far. We do need something like an entrench because if you don't have a multiplicative element, it, it can get rough. That is to say, meeting the damage and block requirements of the later floors. I can't go for an elite. It's too likely that it's the gremlin knob and I just die instantly. I hate this. I'm going to take 5 damage this turn. 5, 10 damage this turn. Um, but it prevents me from getting weakened. And the Fat Gremlin actually doesn't just weaken you, but it makes you frail in this mode as well. And weakness plus frailty is... rough. All right. Yeah, Body Slam and True Grit are in the next hand. I just need to make sure that True Grit gets changed. Upgraded. Another Body Slam's probably a bit much. We'll start drawing a lot of Body Slams and not enough things to activate the Body Slam. Yeah. Not particularly where we want to be. I've got to take out the Acid Slime so that I don't keep getting weakened because continually weakening me is one of the ways that you can really shut me down. Perfect. And prevent me from being able to kill the jaw worm before the jaw worm gets out of control. All right, we're going to let the ghostly armor expire here. Partly for the damage, but also... Also partly just so that we can get to our body slams more quickly. Speed potion. I think fairy in a bottle is actually going to be extremely useful. I think the dex potion is actually going to be extremely useful in the upcoming combat as well. Okay. Bad. Took a moment to remember that I have Karen's Ashes there, but when we did, we were pretty quickly on the track of the winning strat. It's definitely not going to be steroid potion. Zoom was theoretically possible, but it's just a little bit of free AoE, basically. We'll upgrade the Ghostly Armor. This is a primarily defensive deck, so it should have less of a problem against the Guardian. Mm. 
this could be a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Not getting any of our body slams pretty early there. Uh, ha -ha, rough. Actually, would have done more damage by not playing the defend before I used the first true, uh, the first attack there. All right. So in general, the idea here is that I want to play the true grit to burn all of the defenses out of my deck. The defenses. Sorry, the the strikes. My, my bad. I'm going to burn the lower tier. Yeah, I will. Burning strike out there was actually also the most damage that we could do. I'd love to play the double bash there, but if I do, I'm dead. So, mm, well, rough. We'll see what we do. Uh, body slam, body slam, strike. That's exactly the kind of hand that I basically just want to get every single turn. Which is the entire idea behind burning out all of our strikes. So the first does 20, the second one does 16. Yeah, which means I don't have lethal. It's fine though. Next hand will. Burn him. Woo. Feed Juggernaut MLA. I can't take Juggernaut. Slowing this deck down kills it. All right. Has to be the Cursed Key. Need the extra energy. If I had known that I was going to get the Cursed Key for the extra energy, I possibly would have considered the Juggernaut a little bit more heavily. Possibly. Okay. Eh, could have been a lot worse. Certainly. Yeah, being frail is real bad with this deck. Ow, ow. All right, I'm actually going to allow you to damage me for two so that I can get an extra strike out there because I, I think fundamentally we can have a lot of problems. Oh, come on. Really? He put all but one of the aggressive cards in the same hand. See, this is what I'm worried about. Fights like this, how do we win them? Again, slowing down the deck would really hurt. Oh, God. Are we now just dead to you? I'm going to attack potion looking for a whirlwind or something. Cleave. Just need. Oh, I can't even put it on the ground because it's four. You all suck. You have to hit them four times to put them on the ground in this mode rather than the standard before. Which, as you might have deduced, was fewer than four. This is buffing for the second time, so it's the most potent enemy on the field now. Alright. Backline's now buffed as well, so... <laughs> what mercy. What reprieve we've been granted. I can now put you on the ground. Excellent. I mean, I could kill the other one and then attack you again, but I dealt no damage to you, so you'll still be alive. 
We got revived by the fairy potion and then immediately killed. That's why that deck needs Entrench. Like, that was that deck performing at one of its highest, right? It had the extra energy as well. It had most of its defensive cards upgraded. It had two body slams, both of which were upgraded. It didn't have enough removal on those strikes. Drawing those strikes with the body slams and having a couple of bad turns there due to bad luck on the draws, but still. That's, that's why I'm so gung-ho on removing cards from the deck. Removing cards from the deck removes a lot of the variation in the kinds of hands that you can draw, so you can more likely get the kind of hand that you're looking for. Uh, wow. That was... That hurt. 26. Again, all of these episodes have been short recently because we mean losing. A lot. I can't take the transformation option. Is there any path with no elites? No. Elite, 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 and then... Wait, are that... What? No, there is a path with no elites. It's just garbage. All right. I'll take it. I can't really, with good conscience, put myself on a deadline with elites when I know, you know, number one, how powerful they are in this mode. Should have just defended again. There's no reason we didn't deal any damage. Um, number one, because I know how powerful they are in this mode. But number two, because I can't guarantee that I'll have a win condition by the time I get to them. Uh, I don't like spot weakness as a win condition. i got to be honest with you. I really don't. I'm going to take Iron Wave as a value pick. Perfected Strike's the first win condition I saw. Let's go with it. Bash. We've got a lot of combats on this uh, path as well, so that kind of bodes well for us. Having a lot of combats means a lot of card rewards, means a lot of possibility that we pick up the strikes that we need for this deck to you know, perform. Flex does go in a perfected strike deck because you pick up so many strikes that you are picking up a lot of attacks. Uh, density of attacks in your deck is pretty high and you can take advantage of that. Second flex is a bit too zealous. I'll take the Thunderclap, though. Upgrade the Perfected Strike, then the flex. Yeah. Just save 9 HP with the Block Potion. Still think it'll be more handy later. We have so many more upgrades on this path, though. Well, well. Can't let myself get blinded by the value. Thankfully, we had a lot of aggression there, so we were able to take the enemy down before the worst turn, which was about to happen. The Courier, the Merchant, no longer runs out rather of cards, relics, or potions, and their price is increased by 20%. We still haven't found a second strike, which bodes extraordinarily poorly for us. Yeah. It's not like I want perfected strike only. I want a bunch of other strikes as well, and a bunch of other perfected strikes, and rage, and flex. Oh god, we're probably dead right now. Running pack to the defend. Wow, that's not what I wanted. Alright, I'll defend for the 12 there, and then prevent some of the weakness. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. We actually made it out of that one reasonably unscathed. See, the same deck that supports the Perfected Strike with the Flex uh, also supports Whirlwind. And it'll provide some AoE that we don't have in the deck yet. Still think we're dead, like extremely. But, you know. May as well give it a shot. Like, we needed that first Perfected Strike to immediately be followed up with, like, nine more Perfected Strikes. Or at least not none. There's another Perfected Strike. It was just waiting for, or trying to take as little damage as possible while I wait for the whirlwind there. Flex. Because the flex whirlwind is going to be a huge part of this combat. Wow. The perfected strike is... Okay, cool. The worst split possible. Literally the worst split possible. Here we go. Now, our job is to survive until the next whirlwind. And hopefully not be weakened on the turn that we can launch it. Yep. Okay, only two of you left. Neither of you can weaken me, so as soon as we get whirlwind, we win. We start working down a single target, hoping that if the next turn only one of them's attacking, it's that one. Cool. Alright, we lived on one HP. Double tap typically goes into this kind of deck, but I mean, it has to. It has to. I wanted to go for the offering, but it has to be double tap. It's got to be Sozu there as well. I need the extra energy. This is a double tap whirlwind deck now. That also has perfected strikes in it. Uh, there's no elite free path. This is the best path, though. Ow. Ow. Double Perfected Strike really performing its work there. Alright, Chosen's down. Probably not another flex yet. Only thing I care about here is card removal now. Whirlwind? I can't play like I'm definitely going to draw Whirlwind next hand. Even if it were true, which I hasten to add, it clearly wasn't. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, due to the extra energy, that actually puts it on the grounds. Revenge! Uh, I'm basically playing 20 gold to save myself 4 damage here because Sozu means I can't take those potions anyway. So, Sozu, um, we're not going to do that. Roughly trying to equalize their HP. At the start, at the very least.
now I just want to, or rather then I just wanted to turn around and kill the mainliner. Um, cool. My gosh. These perfected strikes are actually, they're now getting to workable conditions. You know what? No. We're just taking you out of the picture. Should have done that with a perfected strike on the Taskmaster, though. Like, this will make my next turn a lot easier, but... This is also the only elite I'm fi uh, fighting this for. It's probably the best elite I could have fought. My god. Gosh. Uh, yeah, Vajra definitely goes in this deck. All right. I don't think aggressive decks work in High Ascension, but it, I'm willing to try it. Enemies like this are why it doesn't. That said... Doing pretty well right now. Take the upgraded war cry there. Ah, yes, this is the new one. Okay, so in Jess Mutagens, gain a special new relic. That new relic is um become test subject. A stranger interested in advancing science, augmenter. Uh a man with a eye patch and devilish grin slides up to you. Um interested in advancing science, I can make you one of the stronger with than any training or blessing. You're gonna need it if you have to. If you're one of those heroes with a death wish, what do you say? So Jax uh, would be immediately upgraded. So it'd be lose three HP, gain three strength, no exhaust. Whereas this would be on your first turn, you have three extra strength. I think if the fight prolongs for any period of time, we're dead anyway. So I think we take the this one. Unigenic strength. Start each combat with three strength that is lost at the end of your turn. Art of War, as well as the Morbank. Uh, whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No longer works when you spend any gold at a shop. Art of War is if you don't play any attack during your turn, gain an extra energy next turn. So it's, you know, blank for us. It doesn't mean anything. It's another perfected strike. I don't have the ability not to take that at this point. Um, that said, here I should definitely rest. Possibly should have rested in the previous phase as well. In fact, I believe I definitely should. Getting the Whirlwind literally the turn before the orbs turn up. I'm not going to say it's rough, but it's not great. Probably should have killed the one that was attacking that turn. That's my bad. All right, that's very quick to have killed all of the enemies that we're fighting. That said, we're now dead. We're exactly dead as well. That's what I'm talking about. The enemies do so much damage. Like, you can have an aggressive deck for a while, especially if Slime Boss is your first boss. But there's... Like, you would have to be so aggressive to be able to beat the second floor boss while playing aggressively. Especially if you get the champion. Like... Like, are you just playing for Apparition at that point? It feels like... It really feels like after Ascension uh, 17, 18, and 19, that you're just playing for find Apparitions with an aggressive deck on floor two. It's... The weight of it gets heavier and heavier. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.